Welcome back to CNBC TV 18 Weekend. We're in conversation with Sridhar Bembu about how he plans on building a tech company from rural India and all that it entails towards the path of success. Sridhar, I have to ask you, you were telling me about how there is expectation, no doubt, given the circumstances, that IT growth will slow, you know, in the years that, that go by, given the circumstances, but you are willing to take that hit as long as it means keeping employees. I remember when I met you in November and we spoke of how much growth would slow. You told me that there were a lot of variables involved and that, you know, forecasting growth at this point for Zoho would not be possible. Are you in a place where there's a lot more clarity in terms of how revenue growth will slow? You hit the 1 billion mark in revenue last year. What's it like for FY24? We've just, we've just entered the new fiscal. What's it's, it like? It's probably one of the most uncertain environments right now. Mm -hmm. No, I'm not in the economic forecasting business, but I have seen growth slow down steadily over the last year, mm -hmm. and we are still growing. And uh, we see we have two currents going on with our business. First, well, first is we are a very diversified, broad-based, you know, geographically as well as product-wise diversified company. Mm -hmm. Like we don't derive a lot of revenue from any one product mm -hmm. or any one geography. Mm -hmm. We are well diversified across the world around many products. That gives you a stability in a downturn, mm -hmm. which is a good thing. But we do live in a, this massive earthquake zone called the global economy. Right. So however strong a house you've built, you still you know, have to suffer some shakes or some rattles or maybe some mm -hmm. fallen cupboard or something in the house, mm -hmm. even if the house itself is sound. Mm -hmm. So I believe that's, that's, that's how I des describe the mm -hmm. whole situation from the economic point of view. Mm -hmm. If that were the only thing, that's, that's, you know, we know we have handled it, two downturns, big downturns we have gone through. But there's another dimension now, that whole AI related disruptions, where we, I expect software productivity to go up tenfold. Yes. Maybe a hundredfold. Yes. It's like one software engineer could do the work of a hundred eventually. Not immediately, but could be over the next three to five years. Mm -hmm. And the analogy I give is how handloom weavers suddenly confront the power loom, yeah. the air jets, all of that. Mm -hmm. And it's a whole different ballgame. Yeah, and it's interesting you said that, and I read your tweet as well. It, it is almost trending towards 10x, yeah. uh, but a 100x efficiency could not be very far away. Yeah. That could well mean more products, quicker productization, exactly. which could also affect human resources at yeah. some point. And, and here's how I say it. So when you have 10x productivity in a sector, if revenues grow 10x with it, then employment can be even. Yeah. Because you produce 10x more for, per worker, but you also sell 10x more, so the prices are same, and you can pay the workers all of that. Mm -hmm. And you can pay the workers to next actually mm -hmm. with that. But if revenues start not growing at the same rate, mm -hmm. if revenue grew only 3x, mm -hmm. but productivity is 10x, then you have a problem. Right. And keeping with AI itself, you also made a very interesting point recently when you said that it needs to be as open as can get. Yeah. And monopolization of AI is a danger that we have to contend exactly. with and vanquish. Um, do you see the risk of monopolization being something as real as it could possibly get in it, India? It is. And, and as a country, we also have such a critical technology as AI, mm -hmm. which is loaded with all manner of implications. Mm -hmm. Because AI can influence elections through misinformation. AI could spread information, misinformation, all of it. Mm -hmm. So which means that our citizens, our democratic process has to have a say in this. Mm -hmm. It's not merely a matter of you know, just technology here public policy gets involved. And we already have a great experience with this digital public goods like UPI. Yeah. So UPI is a grand, brilliant success. Everybody acknowledges it. It's a worldwide success. Mm -hmm. It's because nonprofit entities like the India Stack, that whole iSpirit, all those organizations, work together with the government to come up with the stack and it took off. Mm -hmm. And the ONDC is another brilliant mm -hmm. experiment that has started now and I believe I wish it grand success. We are participating in it. Mm -hmm. These are all a very different approach to digital public goods mm -hmm. than what we find in America or in the West. Mm -hmm. And so we, we definitely have to learn from our own experience here. Mm -hmm. I do believe in AI as a digital public good. Mm -hmm. It can benefit all our citizens. Mm -hmm. But for that, we have to have input from our policies, all of that, to ensure that it benefits all our citizens. It cannot be a rent-seeking monopoly. Right. Like in a way that, for example, operating system used to be, mm -hmm. where one company controlled all the operating system and collects rent. Mm -hmm. We cannot allow that with the AI. Mm -hmm. That's important for our policy makers to realize. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. But I also have to ask you, given, given the bad and the good that coexists, and of course the bad being you know, owing to macroeconomic factors, um, 
a quick read of how the numbers stack up for Zoho is quite interesting. Manage Engine, which of course accounts for half of your revenues, registered growth of uh, I think 25% in FY21, slow to 18% the next fiscal, um, and the company says that it could continue growth over the next two, three years. In fact, going on to register a billion dollars of revenue yes. on its own itself. Right. So while these forecasts are looking rosy and are positive, does that automatically mean better growth prospects for Zoho, despite all of these challenges that we speak about? If you know, as I said, there are these, subject to these significant uncertainties which nobody can forecast. Mm -hmm. We are still growing and we are poised to grow. Mm -hmm. But what I cannot predict is what will happen three months, six months down the road. Right. As I said, the global economy is a massive earthquake zone. Mm -hmm. And even the bailouts that happened, mm -hmm. it all felt so ad hoc. Mm -hmm. So, like, they're reacting. Mm -hmm. And what if there is a crisis, they cannot really react this way quickly. Mm -hmm. Those are the worries. And, and I have long been a critic of central banking policies, particularly in the West. Mm -hmm. So for me, this is not a surprise that all these things happen. Mm -hmm. I didn't predict that SVB, Silicon Valley Bank, would be the one that mm -hmm. hit the skids. But it's obvious that the financial system had a lot of such mm -hmm. like minds, minefields. It's a minefield. Mm -hmm. And so it is difficult to predict mm -hmm. all those. And what, how policymakers will react, what will happen to the US dollar. None of those are in our control. Mm -hmm. But barring all those, we have really good products and services. We are very competitive in terms of the full functionality, the integration, the value that we add, all of this. So if businesses are buying software at all, mm. we believe we have a good chance of winning that, mm. their, their custom. Mm -hmm. But the question is how many people will be buying in six Absolutely. months? That is the question. And not just how many, how many people, because I think when we last spoke, you also said that the ticket price per business was also reducing. Do you see some positivity on that front or does it continue to stay? We, we actually are seeing greater than ever number of customers, okay. but also the ticket size has come down. Right, so how, how, what's the increase in customers vis-a-vis -vis the fall in ticket size? So we, we would have seen a surge of like 20, 30% in terms of customer count, okay. compared to say a year, year and a half ago, mm -hmm. which is very good. Mm -hmm. But revenue itself was only growing like uh, 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 less than that. In other words, we are not growing at 20, 25%, mm -hmm. even though customer count is growing 20, right. 25%. Right. And the reason is that fall in ticket size. Mm -hmm. It, it is one way at a good sign because smaller customers yes. and more uh, uh, you know, uh, budget constrained customers are coming to us. Mm -hmm. And in these times, being seen as a value player and a company that delivers a lot of value is a good thing. Mm -hmm. So I'm not, you know, I'm not complaining about the surge in customer count. Mm -hmm. I also believe that these customers, longer term, as they grow, they will grow with us. Right. So in a way, that, that also it's a foundation for future growth right. as well, having lots of customers. Mm -hmm. But you are seeing that reduction in ticket size. It is stabilizing, it's not further declining, mm -hmm. but it is definitely that, that trend is very observable in our data. And the revenue growth for the fiscal gone by would have been a ballpark figure of around We would have grown close to 20%, but I don't expect the next year, I'm not forecasting it, mm -hmm. I don't expect 20%. Don't I'd be surprised if I get 20%. So. Right, right. <laughs> Uh, but then I also have to ask you before we end, the last time we spoke you said you were doubling investments in AI and machine learning, yeah. critical, critical sectors, yeah. no doubt. Uh, does that commitment stand good given the fact that you've also managed to retain your employees, it is a downturn that you are facing, but are you continued to commit to those in investments? Yes, so yes, we have, we, have, we have actually, we are increasing our AI investment, uh, moving more people into that, and also the hardware resources. AI, is uh, expensive not just in terms of people. Mm -hmm. You also need this GPU compute, all of that. Right. So we are acquiring all that capacity, all of that too. So. All right. Well, you heard it from the man himself. The future is all about artificial intelligence and what's more, it could take form and shape in the villages of India as opposed to the big city. Sridhar Vembo, on that note, great to have you with us here on CNBC TV and Weekender. Thank you so much. For Thank, you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Andri.